Which are the best medicines to treat multiple sclerosis? Which are the worst? In this video, I'm going to share with you my opinions about rank ordering medicines based on efficacy. Don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. This video is part of a series I've been doing studying the MS disease modifying therapies, medicines that we use to slow down multiple sclerosis. Now, if you've missed the previous videos, no worries, you can click this link right here. But this video is really intended to focus on efficacy. How good is the medicine? And at the end of the video, I will share with you my opinion rank ordering the medicines. Now, a couple things that we need to say before we jump into this discussion. Number one, I am biased. There are some medicines that I like a lot more than others. I'm very opinionated about this. And that doesn't make me right, it just makes me really opinionated. Where do I come up with my opinion? Really from three places. The first is the clinical trials that lead to the approval of the medicines. I'm an MS clinical trialist and I have participated in a lot of these clinical trials. And when the data is finally published, it's like gospel teaching us about the medicine and about its efficacy. And so I look at that very carefully. Also, after a clinical trial is completed, the core trial, which in MS is typically two to three years, then patients are offered an extension arm where we continue to study the patients for years and years and years, sometimes indefinitely. Those long-term follow-up studies are very important to me because you don't have MS for two to three years. And so I wanna see how the medicine plays out over time. The third place where I develop my opinions about these medicines is from my clinical practice and my participation in MS clinical trials. So I've been a practicing MS neurologist for well over a decade and a half, and I use these lotions and potions to try to slow down people's disease. Now, putting all that information together is where I come up with my opinions that I'm about to share with you. The second important thing to bring up is to define efficacy. So how are we gonna determine if one drug might be better than the other? There are really four efficacy points that I think about when I'm involved in a clinical trial or reading a paper or when I'm looking at a drug in clinical practice. The first has to do with the annualized relapse rate, how often someone has an MS attack and the drug's ability to decrease that risk. The second has to do with confirmed disability improvement, which is doctor talked for your neurological examination got worse. And so how good is the drug at its ability to delay or slow or halt progression of disability? And is the drug able to create confirmed disability improvement, which is when your neurological examination literally improves on the therapy, which is always very exciting. The next two parameters that I really look at have to do with the MRI. The first being new or enlarged or enhancing lesions. And so how good is the drug at preventing new lesions from popping up on future MRIs? The last has to do with brain volume or atrophy. So I wanna see how good is this drug at slowing down accelerated brain loss? Those are the four points that I'd be looking at when I'm trying to sort out where I rank a medicine. Now, with all that, let's jump into a discussion where I will share with you my opinions going from the least effective drugs available to the very most effective. Coming in at dead last, ninth on my list, are the low-dose interferons. So these are interferon beta injections, including Avonex and Plegarty. In my strong opinion, those are the least effective medicines available to treat MS, and quite bluntly, I don't really use them in clinical practice. Coming in just above low-dose interferons at number eight, is a tie with Copaxone, glutaramor acetate injections, and high-dose interferon beta products. And these would include Rebif, Extavia, and Betaseron. To get a little bit more granular, Rebif comes in a high and a low dose, and I do not consider the low dose to be as effective as the high dose. Real quick before we go on, do me a favor. If you like this video, would you please give it a thumbs up? Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Those two actions teach the YouTube algorithm that you really like this content and help push it out so more people impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you. More efficacious than the interferon shots or glutaramor acetate is teraflutamide, Abagio. Abagio comes in a seven milligram dose and a 14 milligram dose. 
And I think the seven milligram dose is really not very effective at all and I would not use it. So I'm speaking about the 14 milligram dose. I also need to make a caveat or an asterisk by Abagio because when I rank it just above the self injections, I'm really talking about it as it relates to relapse rate and MRI activity. Because Abagio is okay at that, it's about as good as the interferons, it's not great at it. However, Abagio is rather remarkable, in my opinion, at its ability to slow disability progression and, importantly, slow brain volume loss. So if we're looking at those two parameters, I actually would place Abagio much higher on the list. Coming in at number six are the fumaric esters. So these are pills to include Tecfidera, dimethyl fumarate, and Vumeridae, diroximal fumarate. Coming in at number five are the S1P1 receptor modulators. That's a mouthful for the pills Gelenia and the Gelenia Me2 drugs, Ponvori, Mazent, and Zyposia. Now we have to put an asterisk by these medicines as well, because if we look at their MRI activity and their relapse activity, I think they're really solid, and that's why I've placed them where I have. However, the ability to slow disability progression leaves a lot to be desired. And if we're to look at that specific parameter, I would place these medicines a little lower on my list. Coming in at number four is king of the pills, Mavenclad, cladarine tablets. This medicine is, in my opinion, superior to all the other pill medicines out there and to the self-injection shots, GA, and interferons. Number three on my list is Tysabri, or natalizumab, an outstanding high-efficacy drug. I place it third on the list because the other drugs I'm going to list do a better job at controlling brain volume loss. Number two for efficacy, in my opinion, are the B-cell depleters, or the anti-CD20 medications. These are monoclonal antibodies to include Kesempta and Ocrelizumab and off-label Rituximab outstanding medicines, and I think they do a better job at controlling brain volume than Tysabri. And topping the charts at number one, the most effective medicine used to treat multiple sclerosis is Alemtuzumab or Lemtrada. There you have it guys, my opinion about efficacy. This might lead you to say, okay, well now we're ready to pick a medicine, but we're not. Because efficacy is only part of the equation when choosing a medicine for a patient. We also must consider the safety and tolerability, which will be discussed in the next video in this series. So until then, or until my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.